How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Chef, aka Salmar, on the PlayStation Network, and this here is my best friend, Mr. Kyle. Hi. Hi. How's it going? So, we had a little flub, so these next two videos are going to upload on this weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, uh, are going to be our E3 pre uh, reactions to PlayStation and Xbox conference. The reason why they're so late is because, for some reason, the videos disappeared, uh, we lost <gasps> all the stuff that we did, so we are redoing it. But honestly, it's kind of for the best because we can kind of let some stuff simmer a little bit, we can get better consolidated thoughts, and now that we've rested on some of it, we can kind of mull over things. And I personally have changed my mind on a couple things and rethought some things. Uh, but anyway, let's get right into it. So, Kyle, what's first on the list? Um, well, Jeffrey, uh, I, I heard them, they kind of opened with the Xbox One S a lot, right? The Slum? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much what they led off with. Yeah, and it was like... Because it was that and uh, the controllers. Yeah, because how, like... They're making really customizable controllers now, which is really, really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's really like, awesome. You can, like, like, the Gears of War one. They, well, that's... No, I mean, they have, like, just limited... Example? No, they have a limited... No, those are, like, separate. Those, oh, uh, okay. Xbox is, and PlayStation both have, like, a lot of limited edition controllers, usually for, like, certain consoles. Like, Uncharted has one. Okay. They came with, like, the bundle. Uh, Halo had one. So, Gears, is, of course, is going to have one. Every okay. console... Like, every game usually has a limited edition controller. I'm assuming Dark Souls even has one somewhere. Probably in Japan, but, um, but no, I mean, the, these customizable controllers from Microsoft, pretty much, you customize it all the way, like, entirely all the way you want, you, you pick the color scheme of the, the controller itself, the plastic, uh, you can pick, I think, the colors of the, uh, the buttons, the, the shoulder triggers and the shoulder buttons, uh, and the, di the diagonal pad, I think you can change the cross pad, along with the thumbsticks, uh, you can put, like, that, say, your uh, gamer tag on it, like, right beneath, uh, like, where your microphone jack is, like, right above it, in, be in between the uh, diagonal pad and the right joystick, or you could put, like, whatever you want there, and there's, like, a lot of other things you can do, you could put, like, decals on it and shit like that, so, like, the controllers themselves are really, really cool, and I hope PlayStation does that eventually, where they offer opportunity to, to customize your DualShock controller, because I would love to do that. I would go ham on making a PS4 <laughs> controller. I would make it the most nostalgic. I would have, like, three different controllers. I would have one that's <laughs> all throwback PlayStation 1 shit with, like, Crash Bandicoot, old school Solid Snake on it, the Siphon Filter Squad, Spyro the Dragon, freaking uh, medieval uh, Sir Fortescue, Daniel Fortescue, and a bunch of that kind of shit. Then, you know, Dual Shot, and my other one would be PS2, Jack and Dax, or Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, all them bad boys. But, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that part. Like, that, to me, like, for me, I saw as Microsoft is really, like, finding ways to appeal to the consumer base. Like, heavily. My only question is how expensive it would be to make your own controller. Like, through them. I'm assuming you have to go through them. And I'm wondering how much that would cost. If it's relatively cheap, like if it's only like twenty bucks more or fifteen bucks more to customize your own controller, versus just buying buying a standard controller, because so you, worth it would be so worth it. Because I mean, yeah, most controllers run sixty, but if you can customize every little detail just about of your own controller for seventy five bucks versus buying a black one or a white one or whatever basic bitch one you want, <laughs> it's fucking worth a shit. Um, but I'm getting off track anyway, because besides that, there was the Xbox One Slim. Yeah, and it's like, you practically fit it in your pocket. It's so, so tiny. Yeah, it uh, what is it, like, four times smaller than the Xbox One? Something like that, yeah, it's like 60% smaller or something like that. Like, uh, I think it's about the same size as the PS4, if not maybe a little smaller. I'm not sure how big it is compared to the PS4. Yeah. And, the, and they also, during that conference, they talked about the whole Play Anywhere mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, they're doing, like, a thing through computers now or something? Yeah, I mean, it's because it's Microsoft. They have that whole... It's weird. Um, I really enjoy what Microsoft is doing, but I felt like every time... And this is kind of an overall criticism of the very minimum criticisms I have of either Microsoft or Sony. I have criticisms of both. Don't worry. I'm not going to fanboy over PlayStation and say that it was perfect. But both had plenty of issues. Um, I think Xbox had a few more, but that's because of reasons I'll get into later. Now that I've sit, sat back and thought about it. But um, 
with the Play Anywhere thing, it's one of those things where during a conference, you know, they kept saying, oh, Xbox exclusive, Xbox exclusive, you know, like Gears and Fours and all this. But a lot of those games, like Gears, you can play on the computer. There are Windows 10 as well. So it's like one of those things where it's like, okay, you should say console exclusive. That's why I give a lot of credit to PlayStation because they are they have like this new, they, it started last year, I think, where when uh, at the PlayStation Experience, where this, whenever they showed off a game, uh, if it was a first party exclusive, you know, if it was only on PlayStation, it would say PlayStation exclusive, you know. If it was a PC and PlayStation exclusive, they would say a console exclusive. Like, uh, Street Fighter was a good example of that. So, I always found it weird when Xbox is like, oh, it's our exclusive. And technically it is, because it only runs through their software, through only Microsoft. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but this is an Xbox conference. This isn't a Microsoft conference. This is Xbox. It's a little different. It's... Windows is a part of Xbox, yes, but at the same time, my, Xbox is its own thing, too. So this whole Play Anywhere thing is kind of like a very weird area, I think. But that being said, it is really cool, because you can play Gears on any computer, technically. At any point, and a lot of other games on any computer. Yeah, and you can play, like, along with like play. with people on, like, let's say you're playing on a computer, you can play with people on a console also, like, yeah. at the same time. You yeah, don't have uh, to be on, like, you don't have to be, like, on a computer to play with someone on a correct. computer. You can correct. play with someone, like, on Do you a remember console. on the 360, during the early years of the 360, uh, I don't know if you would, I barely even played it, uh, a game called Shadowrun. Do you remember anything like that? Game? Oh, no. Shadowrun was one of the first games to really introduce the concept of a computer console hemisphere working together because the 360 had players that played with PC gamers and PC gamers played with 360 players. It was a clusterfuck because console games were not prepared to like handle like sharing that, but it was a cool idea. And I think Rocket League is the newest endeavor of that and it's been the most successful so far of showing off uh that PC gamers and console gamers can play together in the same world at the same time, get against each other or with each other. Um, and that's been proven. So I think Xbox is taking advantage of the idea that PC gamers and Xbox, you know, uh, or gamers just in general, should be able to play with each other no matter what platform they're on. But that being said, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out, but it is a really cool endeavor that Microsoft is doing. Um, it kind I kind of wish they would, like, clear up the messaging in terms of, you know, kind of maybe take a cue from PlayStation where it's like, okay, this is only on Xbox, this is a console exclusive to Xbox, but it's also on, it's also on our Windows property, or something like that, right? But, mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll see. But it, they started off pretty strong with the Play Anywhere idea. It, you know, despite my criticisms, it is a really strong idea. Uh, the controllers really cool. I love the concept behind the controllers. And even the Xbox One S, I mean, that system looks beautiful. Hugely, much more small. Much more small. Great grammar, Jeff. Much more smaller. It's, it's, much more smaller. It's much smaller than before, like by a shit ton. Plus, it has. If finally Xbox is taking a cue from PlayStation, got rid of that damn power brick. We're in the day and age where you don't need an external power source. Put that shit inside of the... The PlayStation's been doing that for years. I never understood why Microsoft had to do that. I understood it with the first micro, the first Xbox, because that thing actually was a powerhouse. It was more powerful than the PS2. Shout out to, to Microsoft. But it, it, they did it for the 360, which I never understood, because the PS3 was much more powerful. And then the PS4 was more powerful than Xbox One, and they didn't need a power brick. So I don't know. I was always confused by that. So I'm glad to see that Microsoft is finally going, yeah, maybe we don't need that anymore. <laughs> But we'll see if they actually still have it on the Scorpio or not. Um, but you know, the fact it's smaller, it, uh, it's at 300 bucks with 500 gigs. You know, it's you know a very affordable Xbox One if you don't have one. Uh, and it's got HDR gaming, which is basically a little bit higher definition gaming, which is really nice. But it's not 4K. So those of you that think you're getting 4K gaming on Xbox One S, you're not. You're not. It can do. Sh <laughs> it, it streams 4K. That's correct. The whole Netflix 4K streaming, that's a thing. If you have that and you can afford it and all that, you can do that on this system. But that's about all it does with 4K. You guys, just a heads up. Not talking shit, just that clearing the air about that because I feel like some people might be confused about that little tidbit. My grandma was 
so hype about 4K TVs. She wanted, like, she got a new TV recently, and she was like, really? I want this 4K TV, and, like, my Nothing grandma. Nothing uses it yet, though. Yeah, I was like, grandma, you, like, you don't Unless she's going to give it to you, and then, give, and then you <laughs> give it to me, my proxy, so I can play the PlayStation 4 Neo or the Scorpio on that bitch, yeah. which I'll take it. I would fully take it. I'd be like, all right, grandma, yeah, I'll give it back to you eventually. <laughs> I'm just going to use this real quick. All right, what's up? What's next on the list, Blake? Uh, let's get to a few games here. So, was, of course, it was a gaming conference, right? Yeah, you know, it's E3 Electronic Entertainment. I mean, yeah, something like that. Uh, the new Gears of War. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, it looks fine. Uh, it looks like Gears. I don't know. I mean, the gameplay they showed up didn't really impress me, unlike the last demo they showed last year. I preferred the one last year just because... It showed off more of a horror vibe, and the monsters were much more interesting. Yeah. Really, I didn't get interested into this demo until that monster at the end busted through the doors. And I was like, oh, cool, a new enemy type. And then and it then just it cut. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, that's cool. <laughs> because honestly, I mean, I, I like what the, it was trying to go for, but literally, it's... It's still the Locust, right? It's still the Locust. Kind of. it, it looks... I, I don't know what... And they're using the same weapons? Yeah, they're something? using hammer burst weapons, and they look... These humanoid enemies look exactly like the Locust used to. And I get, what, I get like, there are going to be different enemy types. I'm not that ignorant to think that these are the only enemy types. But still, nevertheless, it is very annoying to see that the humanoid enemies couldn't have been remodeled to be something different. You know, especially since this is supposed to be, I think, a new planet or something, maybe? So, I, I don't know. It's It's odd. I like where this game is going. A lot of damn not, storms or something. I, yeah. I don't know who would want to live on that damn planet. I'd be out of there. I was like, aliens, you can have this shit. You can have this shit. You can have lightning storms and lightning yeah, tornadoes. You, can, you no. can keep that to yourself. This Mad Max bullshit going on. I'm out of here. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm interested in see where it goes. I enjoy the Gears franchise a lot. Three and Judgment, I, I kind of cooled on, but I really did like the first and second one a lot. The third one was... Fine. Uh, the fourth, the Judgment, I wasn't a big fan of, but uh, I'm interested to see what this franchise could be like again, but I don't know. This demo didn't really sell it for me. I'm still living off of what can be slash might be in terms of what the previous demo was, but we'll see. What else we got? Yeet. <laughs> yeet. 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 Uh, the Forza, like, open world, kind of. Oh, Horizon, game. yeah. Looks good. Uh, I played Horizon 1 and 2. They're a lot of fun. They're more arcadey than motorsport, obviously. But they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, I don't know. What what did you think of from the little brief bit that you saw? I mean, it, it was cool. Isn't there like a NASCAR part of no, it also? That, I think that's in the uh, the current Horizon 2, or maybe that's in the current motorsport that just came out. Okay. Are we talking about all the DLC that gets shown on like Twitch and shit? Uh, I don't know. I thought I that, saw that's something what that's about for. a NASCAR. Yeah, the recent like advertisements for Forza, that's for the current game itself. This one's come out in September. The Horizon 3. Gotcha. Um, supposedly it comes out... It takes place in Australia, so... I don't know. Australia. 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 <laughs> uh, well, it's they show off, uh, Battlefield 1 got shown off, right? Oh, yeah. Little, yeah. Yeah, I mean... And when I when I saw Battlefield One, like the trailer when it first came out, I was like, "This looks so good." <laughs> oh yeah, it looks beautiful. Especially since it's taking place in World War One. Yep. It's like I'm so glad they're going back. <laughs> it's like it's like when Call of Duty went to and did World of War. Yeah. You know yeah. that game was so good. I loved World of War to be honest. Yeah, and uh, so. It just looks phenomenal. I'm very pumped. Yeah. For this no, game. It, it looks fantastic. I mean, Dice is doing an amazing job, like they normally do. Um, I saw some of the uh, multiplayer that was shown off, and I mean, it looks incredible. Um, I like how they even brought in Zeppelins, even though Zeppelins were literally useless during the war. Like they did <laughs> nothing except destroy their own people, usually, or destroy towns. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens when they blow up. They crash into the city and just blow everything up. It's kind of funny. Uh, they were... Just... It, look, it looks cool. My only downside is that at following all the footage and stuff, supposedly, they're not going to have the French army in it. 
They're gonna release that as DLC. Huh. That sucks because the French were kind of a big deal in World War One. <laughs> yeah. So, in, in fact, they're a significant part of World War One. So I don't know what exactly is happening, but okay. I'm still hyped about it. It's just it's one of those things where it's like okay, obviously EA still hasn't learned its lesson when it comes to DLC. So that's good. Yeah. You know, you'd think they would learn from Battlefront, whatever. <laughs> But I guess enough people bought Battlefront where they're like, people are going to bitch and moan, but people are going to buy it. It's the same thing with Call of Duty, so I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I if you like if you like it, whatever. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but if you're going to bitch and moan about a product, then go ahead and buy it. You did that yourself. That's not that's on you, not me. Just saying. But anyway. <laughs> uh, and then they showing off Tekken 7, right? Yeah. Comes out in February, I believe, uh, 2017. Looks yeah. good. Looks yeah, like I mean, it, it looks, looks like a next gen Tekken. It looks, looks like awesome. Tekken and lots of screaming and punching yeah, bitches uh, in the face. It looks like it does seamless transitions from the cutscenes now. Like it, it doesn't look like they do that weird cut the black before the fight. Yeah. Uh, and then it also seems like uh, I don't know. Like it seems like they kind of revamp some of the fighting, some of the camera movement, things like that, and obviously environmental environmental damage seems like it's being shown off. Uh, some of the story seems like it's being shown off, but obviously nothing really because. While Tekken has a story, I mean, I don't even know where it's at now. It could be like, it's almost like Days of Our Lives. I don't know what's happening anymore. I just know that it's <laughs> how all is connected somehow and just continues to keep going. It's kind of like Street Fighter in that way. Except Street Fighter doesn't even have that big of a story even. But, I don't know, looks good. I don't know, what do you think of it? I mean, I've, I've been a big, well, not a big fan, but just a fan of Tekken because that was probably my favorite like, fighter game, I would say, kind of, like, arcade fighter yeah. game when I was a kid. Yeah, I'd say that was the same with me. Because I didn't play much of Street Fighter, or more, I played a lot more combat. On the PS2, I played so much oh, Tekken. Oh, yeah, like Tekken 5? Yeah, so Or not much. Tekken 5, uh, Tekken 4. I remember playing Tekken 2 a lot at my buddy's house on the PS1. Oh. That was a lot of fun. Or, uh, I remember, uh, what was it, uh... Uh, God, I'm remembering this, like, weird brawl, brawler, like, PlayStation 1 game right now, but I'm not gonna bother people with that knowledge. It's like a street brawl or something like that. You play, like, four different characters or something. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking so good. I mean, great franchise. And then, what else did they talk about? Uh, Xbox Live, right? They talked about, uh, oh. They did a lot of, they were, like, we're doing this. We're doing communities. We're doing yeah. They, they this add, they're and adding, that. yeah. They're adding communities, which is basically uh, all this different. It's shit. similar to what PlayStation has done. Oh no, they call it clubs, which is Sony's community or PlayStation's communities. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, they, they're adding a lot of stuff with the new uh, live initiative that they're doing. So they're they're doing a lot of new stuff, which is good. It's cool. It, it shows that they're really trying to make their fan base and user base more integrated with one another and also kind of like connected but I mean I, I personally kind of looked and went cool and didn't really pay attention after that just because <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like alright cool you guys are doing some cool stuff but I mean I do it with PlayStation too I'm like cool you're doing updates with the PSN until there's like a major update in the form of like hey we're completely redoing the entire like menu system or whatever then I'm like I don't really pay attention that much I mean if there's like little things here and there I'll check them out but whatever um but I don't know, live is taking some changes, but it doesn't sound like they're doing like big drastic ones in my opinion. But No, they're just adding a lot of stuff. It's a lot of additions and revamps. Yeah. Um and I think it's a good step. It's a it good is. Step. It is. Uh they and showed that, off. like you can I don't know, there's something like you don't have to search for people to play or something like that. There's like yeah. all, there's like these rooms that you can yeah, go into. Yeah, there's uh, like a search always... filter now for like games so you can look and see who's playing and like then you can make like lobbies off of that. Yeah. yeah. You can always find people that are interested yeah, yeah, in yeah. your game and stuff. So. Yeah, it's like a filtering program that they're doing now for Xbox. Yeah, I heard about that. that or I saw that I should say. I, I didn't think much of it at the time honestly. But now that, yeah, now that I think about it, it's actually kinda cool. Um and then they, they talk about Minecraft, which, I mean... Minecraft. Minecraft's cool and all, but, you know, it was never my big cup of tea, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Honestly, I, Minecraft really plays to younger kids, honestly. It yeah, really does. yeah to, to a good extent, but I mean, it's also the people that are just kind of more looking for a casual game. Yeah. And, I mean, it serves a purpose. They show off, like, a new uh, mobile version, I think, is what they really were, like, focused on. I mean, on. like, there's... Th I feel like there's two different... Two sides of Minecraft. Like, the side where, you're like, things are... 
like ultra creative. The, yeah, really ultra creative and building and making these huge like castles or I know there's some people sure some, people are some hardcore person, about it in some form. Yeah, yeah. Some person that made literally the, the Game wall, of Thrones world. The wall. No, it wasn't just the wall. He made the entire world of Game of Thrones. Like, he made King's Landing, he yeah, made Winterfell, he made the wall. Ridiculous. He did all of it. Y'all, there's also another guy that did the entire Lord of the Rings world. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And that's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. And then and there are the people that are more, like, casual like, and just play for shits and gigs every yeah. once in a while. That's I mean, like a break. I, like, you're, like, I got, like, this little nephew or something that makes yeah. a... That makes a... Uh, our, our friend Melanie, her little brother, plays the shit on Minecraft. Yeah. But he doesn't really do anything with it. He just kind of just... Does it? I made, doesn't do anything I made a crazy. house. Yeah, he just makes houses and does like random stuff. But I mean, he doesn't do anything crazy. <laughs> and I know my roommate in college. He still plays from time to time. But he plays for like an hour or two with his buddy. And usually they do it whenever they don't feel like playing Gears or something or Halo. So it's it's one of those things where you just play it in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Um, but what won't be played in the meantime will actually be played legitimately. Is of course Dead Rising Four, which was announced for the holiday season during the Microsoft conference. Really goofy, nice it's, trailer. It's Dead Rising. Yeah. It's Dead Rising. I Which, like the trailer. It's you didn't know this. I actually recently found this out. It is not an exclusive. It is also coming to PlayStation 4. The holiday season. Has that happened there before for Dead Rising? Don't, it it happened for the second one. Dead Rising 1 Dead Rising 3 were only on Xbox. Dead Rising 2 actually came to the PS3. This it seems like every other Dead Rising is coming its way to the PlayStation for some reason. I don't know why. Huh. I don't mind. I like Dead Rising, so whatever. <laughs> um, I like that, like there was this machine. You can drive oh, the a car, car and, and it, it has a catapult in the back and shoots zombies shoot in the crowd. Zombie. Yeah, that's so funny. Because <laughs> I think what it does it has a feeder on the front, so it'll suck up one, put it in the back, and then it'll launch it. It's just it, it's. It's funny as fuck. It's great. It looks like you can park it up a hill and just launch them at a town. Like you'll just like splat them. Um, <laughs> But no, it, it looks ridiculous. It looks fun. It's another Dead Rising game, just like you know, Hori- uh, Forza Horizon Three looks incredible. But I mean, that's just it's par for the course. Uh, Minecraft is Minecraft. You know we're getting with that Battlefield. Hopefully, we're getting a good Battlefield. Gears looks like Gears. Hopefully, that's going to be good. Uh, but then we saw, of course, Scalebound, which we oh still. I mean, we can't really base off of anything because it is the newest IP Microsoft is making right now. And the most unique, besides uh, ReCore. And even ReCore, in its fundamentals, is going to be a weird action platformer version of Mega Man. And I'm not really so sure, you know, I, me, me and you talked about ReCore, and I told you, like, I was pretty positive about it in terms of, like, it's a Mega Man, like, kind of, it's made by the guy that made Mega Man, and, you know, it has, a, it has a lot of potential and stuff. Well, with all the reviews of my number nine, which was made by the guy that did uh, Mega Man, I'm not so sure how positive I should think about ReCore anymore because my number nine was not done very well. So I, I don't know if it's because he focused so much on ReCore, but I have no idea. I, I'm i going to be very hesitant about ReCore. For those of you that don't know ReCore, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but essentially it's like a weird action platformer kind of title, almost like a Ratchet and Clank vibe, but you control robots with a girl, and you use like platform jumping it has like a 3d mega man like mega man legends vibe to it looks cool check it out but one i am more interested slash positive about is scalebound for real it just it just has when I, when, I, when I watched it i was like there's so much going on and it's like I'm, there's I'm, a lot going there's on. so right. much and there's so many questions i had it's like What's how is the co-op? Work? Uh, how how is this working? Yeah, how are people like joining him out of nowhere? <laughs> like, well, are that's, these characters yep. from the game? Are these actual friends of him? I think they're actual friends. And it's but like, it's still, but how does this happen? Yeah, no, and I completely also, agree. Also, the characters, it's like you have like this dragon arm that's all dragon scales or something mm-hmm. like that. Dragon tail. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, and. You get you like morph into this dragon suit or something. Yeah, like a stone dragon suit. Yeah, yeah. and then you like just go crazy on this like thing. <laughs> and it's like what is going? And then you, of course, you ride a dragon. And like, of course, you know it's a dragon rider game. Yeah, it's it's, just, it's basically Aragon the game. Yeah, <laughs> except and, cooler. And got like you're shooting this bow and arrow at this big ass monster. And it's doing jack shit. Yeah. I don't know why they're even doing that demo so much. Like I kept trying to use the bow. I'm like. 
Obviously, we don't care. It's not working. If it was actually shown damage, we'd be interested <laughs> in this. This isn't Legend of Zelda we're trying to show off. We know where the weak point is, motherfucker. It's in the elbow. We see the purple. We see the <laughs> color change. We know where the damage zone is. And you're not hitting it nowhere near it. And that's the, that's the thing. Like, I remember... My biggest complaint... Yours is, like, the confusion of, like, just in general. Mine is... All right. This seems way too easy. Yeah, like for yeah, some I for some reason, that, yeah. Platinum Games is trying to make this game seem like it's going to be hard as shit. But even aside from the co-op, I'm sitting there going, okay, everything is set up for you. It it, looks like. You, I can easily see where the weak points are. So if they're just doing that as a demo, then cool. I mean that makes sense. Then they can hide those for the real build. I'm hoping they take a Bayonetta or a God of War stance in the boss fights, where it is actually pretty hard to fight the bosses at times. But we'll see. Um, seems like a really cool game, though. Very ambitious. Uh, another studio uh, that has shown that they have had problems in the past, though, with Platinum Games making uh, Scalebound right now. But they've made so many other games recently, especially, that have not done well because I feel like they're way too spread out. Just like uh, the man that uh, has created Mega Man and is the creator of uh, Record and Mighty Number no. 9, uh, Infune, it just his projects lately have not been as good for some reason. So I'm worried about Platinum Games because they just made that a Ninja Turtles game that just came out. And it, was not, <laughs> it wasn't very good for all intents and purposes. So that sucks, but um, we'll see how Scalebound goes. Hopefully ReCore and Scalebound are both situations that are just the studio head was focused on their projects, on these specific projects more than the other two there or whatever projects they're working on. So Recore and Scalebound got the most of both of their attentions, and they just end up being amazing. That's why I hope, because um, they both look like great games that should be good. We'll see them. Uh, and then Stay of the K two was shown off, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where it's like, I love Stay K one. What I like, I mean, like there's so many zombie games out there, you yep. know. There are. There are just so many. It's almost becoming there. oversaturated. It's getting yeah. to that point. And with this one, you know, what I've seen from other zombie games, where it's like every man for himself kind of mentality. Sure. Where it, and also it's like, oh, I see a person. I'm going to shoot that person. I don't give a shit about that person. That person must die. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And so, or there's like gangs or something like that where they fight also, and then they fight zombies at the same time. It's weird. Yeah. So, in this one, you actually help other people that you, like, don't even know, you know? Yeah. You actually, like, go out of your way. It's more of creating civilizations. Yeah, of, and you yeah. create, like, a stronghold We're that not, people yeah, can not come Not civilizations, to. but, like, communities. Yeah, yeah, that people can come to when they are, like, in need of supplies or... Yeah. Like, it's basically right. your home away from home yeah. and your refuge, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why I love most about the first, uh... The first uh, say the K because it was that game where it's like another zombie game, but it took a way different viewpoint on it where it's permadeath. So the player, your the person you're playing as, if you die, you're dead. You leave your shit behind. You leave right where you were, and you play as a different person. And you can go grab that gear, but you pick up as a different person. Whatever skills you had before, whatever you're doing before, or not doing before, but whatever skills you had before. Gone. Gone. It's just like it. it it's it, it's difficult to swallow that, but at the same time, it's kind of like well. That Dude, makes it more urgent to be careful, yeah, to be just safe. Just imagine, like, you have this great you character. Become, yeah, and that's exactly... Oh. That, that happened to me. I literally had the boss-ass bitch of all time. And all of a sudden, I got later into the game where they have these, like, mutated zombies, of course. Uh -huh. But these mutated zombies are fucking hard. And there's one, there's ones that charge at you that do a ass and nine amount... Just a stupid amount of damage. And all of a sudden, you just hear... And just... <laughs> knocked, wrecked, dead. And I was like, well... Okay, that was a good run. I guess I'm done with this game. <laughs> and I can play this more character, but I was like, well, I just invested all my time into that one character. I, I'm going to take a break now. <laughs> yeah. But it is an amazing game. I, I truly did enjoy it a lot. And you can bounce around from different characters, too. You don't have to just play as that one character. You just, when you die with that character, it's gone. He's gone or she's gone. But you can pick different ones because they get tired, they need sleep, or they need aid or whatever. You have to eat. You know, there's so much to it. It's almost like a simulator within a third-person action shooter game, and it's awesome. Um, so hopefully State of Decay 2 is amazing. I hope it personally is like uh, um, 
Dead Rising 4, where it's also coming to the PlayStation. That's my fingers crossed, because I would love to play it, but... Anyway. So that's pretty much all the games they showed up, besides Killer Instinct DLC, which is uh, General Ram from Gears of War 1 being a playable fighter, which that's okay. I guess. Whatever. Um, so what's the last thing we gotta talk about? You know. Oh, yeah. You, you right. know. I do know. You know, fam. Oh, uh, the Project Scorpio. Yeah, yeah that's... I mean, that... That thing. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Got official announced with that six terabytes and all the goodness that's inside of the most powerful video game console being created. Yeah, all the good things. That cinematic that they had, it was like... like it, it was cool, but it was also like a dead diagram. Like, I want to look at it, though. Like, show you, what it looks like. Are you doing an ad for, <laughs> like... <laughs> Like hunger in Africa or something like that. It literally like it was all like black that. background with them just each individually talking. <laughs> yeah, oh was, god! But I mean, <laughs> yes, this thing. Oh, it's a lot powerful. of it's crap in it, powerful. and it's like they're like on this thing. They're like talking like just it's the most all this amazing Xbox. stuff. All this amazing stuff. It's blah, the blah, blah, blah. council. And I'm like, for... I have no idea what all this shit means. So I've, been, <laughs> I've, I've explained to Kyle. Many times, or not many times, but I've explained basically me being the nerd I am, what fundamentally the Scorpio is, what quote unquote uh, Phil Spencer, which I believe him, uh, it's the council that developers have been asking for and that they've wanted for a long time. It's basically the closest video game council has ever gotten to being a PC. Like, it is the most next gen that council's ever gotten, and it's almost to where a PC is in terms of a lot of capacity. So, you know, it's going to project 4K, play at 4K, 6 teraflops, it's got a ridiculous amount of RAM and all this shit. It's going to be stupid powerful, and it's going to be backwards compatible to the Xbox One and just do a whole lot of crazy shit. All this it's gonna great be, stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be asinine, stupid, and awesome. It's going to be amazing, but you know, I'm going to ask Kyle before I get on to my little rants for the last like minute. I'm going to save my rant for the end. I want to know your opinion on Scorpio. I mean, I think it, I, I honestly think it's going to be great. Yeah. I do think it's going to be great. Yeah. That's the only thing. Oh, that's the only no thing that's I all have I about say. it right now. <laughs> yeah. Literally, it's like, wow, this has a, they have a lot of shit, and it, it sounds really freaking awesome. Do you think? Shit, yeah. That, do you think <laughs> a holiday 2017 release date is too soon? Ooh, too soon. Because it's like Xbox would it change your mind? Would it change your mind if you knew? Based on facts that the the time frame between the Xbox, the original Xbox, and the 360 was also four years, because oh, technically this also true, is four yeah. years. Because for me personally, I don't mind. It's four years, um, so it is what it is. Um, it doesn't bother me that much that there is only four year difference. My little quick tired. I could go on. I'll make, I'll make a separate video at some point about it, but I think that it's too big of a console to box into being tr attempting to be an Xbox One again. But that's the end of this episode, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, hit that like button, subscribe button. See you guys later. Peace!